Hello. Pixelent Smart Blur Pro is a plug-in for Movie Edit Pro that allows you to blur selectively while retaining desired details, highlights, and edges, yet smoothly blur areas in between. In this third of three tutorials, I'll show how to use keyframing within Smart Blur Pro to follow the action. This builds upon what was learned in the first tutorial in which I gave an introduction to Smart Blur Pro and showed how to blur a selected area, such as a face. In the second tutorial, in which I showed how to selectively smooth out wrinkles on skin on one face without affecting the surrounding area or without affecting a second face. Let's get started. Those of you familiar with keyframing in Movie Edit Pro already have an understanding of the method. In Pixel and Products, Bezier curves can be used as well. For those of you not familiar, keyframing allows you to vary an effect or control over time. You can read up on this in the Magic's Manual. I'm going to show two examples, one that modifies a static image to show progressive skin smoothing of a face over time, and a second example with a video clip with various controls changing over time. For the first example, I've placed on the timeline an image of the elderly lady that you saw in the first two tutorials. Since the effects will take place over time, usually the entire length of the clip, you should trim the beginning and end or reduce the length of the image to only cover the time that you want an effect to take place. A buffer space at the beginning and end can be included. My object here on the screen is 7 seconds in length. Select the image object, go to the Effects tab, Pixel in, and open Smart Blur Pro. This opens the interface with the image and by default applies a preset. As a refresher, I'll quickly run through the features presented in the other two tutorials. At the top of the menu window, click where it says click here to load a preset. This opens the effects browser and shows a preview of the presets. There are menu buttons at the top for help, preferences, save, clear, and a check mark to apply the effects and return to the movie editor. At the bottom middle of the screen are transport buttons. At the bottom left is a time indicator showing the current time and frame from the beginning of the clip. You can enter a value to move the playback marker or simply drag the playback marker to wherever you want in the clip. The total duration of the clip is shown in the box at the right, which in this case is 7 seconds. Just below this is the keyframe box. Click on it. This is the generic keyframe window and we'll come back to this later as this is the window that will be used to vary parameters over time. There are three main parts to Smart Blur Pro. Blur, Shape Mask and Organic Mask. I've reset the effects to zero. Blur size is the main effect. All of the other parameters are adjustments to this blur size. I'll add in a blur by increasing the size. In the image window, we see the blurring. Click on the window once to see the original image. Note the message at the top left of the window. Click on the image again to go back to preview the effects. Opening the shape mask area shows another set of parameters. The parameters include the type of shape mask, round by default, size and edge softness, and movement tools. Opening the organic mask area shows more parameters. I've reset everything to zero. Note that at the left of many of the parameters is a stopwatch icon. All of these can be keyframed and each will have its own keyframe window. I'll click on the icon beside blur size and its keyframe window appears. Note that the icon is lit up. This means that there is keyframing done for this parameter. In the keyframe window, note the horizontal line at 0%. This means that the blur size is set to 0 from beginning to the end. If I move the playback marker to zero and I increase the blur size parameter in the dialog window, the line moves up. I can also drag the keyframe, the small square at the left of the line, upwards and the blur size parameter changes. Now I'll place a playback marker in the window to 100% and click on the plus button to add in a keyframe. Another small square appears on the line. I can now drag this square and the line follows from zero at the beginning inclined upwards to the new blur value at 100%. I can also move the keyframe horizontally. Note that the parameter for the blur size follows along. This graphical method is not very accurate. 
The keyframe window has many features to help out. The transport controls at the top include go to the beginning, go to the previous keyframe, the plus adds a keyframe, minus deletes a keyframe, go to the next keyframe, go to the end or 100% on the timeline. The blue vertical bar is the playback marker and corresponds to the location on the timeline. At the left side, open the pop-down to see any other keyframe windows that have been activated. There's only this one for now. Just below this is a plus and a minus to zoom in and out. The scroll bars at the bottom and on the right side can also be used to zoom. Right-clicking in the keyframe window shows a list of further parameters. To adjust an entire complex keyframe line, choose an option to invert or flip the keyframe line. I'll add in a couple of keyframes and move them upwards and downwards. As I drag the playback marker from left to right, the blur increases, then decreases, then increases again. To indicate precise coordinates for a keyframe, right-click on it. Here we see more possibilities. Copy value, delete keyframe, enter coordinates, and convert keyframe to, which we'll come back to later. You can use a Bezier curve to accelerate or decelerate the control's value over time. Click on one of the keyframes, and two more points appear, one on each side. These are Bezier curve handles that can be moved to smoothly accelerate or decelerate the rate of change. Drag a Bezier curve handle to curve the line. This provides a more professional and realistic look. To make automatic Bezier curve adjustments instead of dragging a handle, right-click the keyframe and choose Convert Keyframe To, and choose one of the options. I'll select Smooth to decelerate before and accelerate after the keyframe. This is easier than dragging the handles. I'll reset this to the default and put the size at zero. For the example with the lady, we want to smoothly bring in the blur effect. Remember that blur size is the main parameter and the other blur parameters act on it. We could set up the final parameters and then just keyframe blur size. But since we want to show keyframing on several parameters in this tutorial, I'll adjust a couple of the parameters to already be at the correct setting and use keyframing to bring the others in. I'll set highlights and edges to their final values. I'll set the details to 25 to start. Now I'll open the keyframe window for size. I want this to go from 0 to 30, but smoothly from beginning to 50% on the timeline. With the playback marker set at 50%, I'll add in a keyframe by clicking on the plus or directly on the line, and then drag the point upwards to about 30%. Right click on the keyframe and select Enter Coordinates. Note that the values are not exactly what I want, so I'll just type them in here, 30 and 50. Accept. Now I'll right click on the beginning point and select Convert Keyframe To and select Smooth. Now I'll right click on the second point and again Convert Keyframe To and this time I'll select Smooth In. Now I have a nice Bezier curve at the start and into the point at 50. Click on the keyframe icon beside Smartness and we have a new window with a line at zero. For effect, I'll have the blur size come in first and then bring in the smartness. So I'll add in a keyframe at 50% and leave it at zero. And I'll put in another keyframe at 80% and I'll drag it up towards 54. Note that the coordinates show in a little window as I drag the keyframe. Click on the keyframe icon beside details and note that the line is already set to 25. I'll add in keyframes at 50% and 80% and then drag the beginning and second keyframes to zero. I can use the Bezier curve handles to make adjustments. Set the playback marker to the beginning in the preview window and press on play to watch the effects over time. The image gets blurry and then smartness and detail start to come in halfway through until we have the final result at 80%. We could add in the masks to this and vary them over time as well, but for that I'll use a video clip. I'll accept the result with a check mark. Our animation is now complete. Now let's look at the video clip. I've trimmed this clip to the length over which I want the effects to occur. 
I've also added in a screenshot of the clip towards the end to finish off my effect with a still image. Let's open Smart Blur Pro. Since you now know how to set keyframes and to save time here, I'm starting with a finished version and will analyze how I got there. In this clip, I first wanted to show everything unblurred, then quickly blur everything, then bring in a small unblurred spot where the dog will come into view. As the dog gets closer, I bring up smartness and edges. I want the dog to take on a somewhat blurry look. Note the parameters. Several of the keyframe icons are lit up. Starting with the blur size, I'll open the keyframe window. Note the curve. Now we'll jump to the shape mask. I've chosen an oval 2 shape to fit the dog. And the blackest part of the mask covers the dog so it will not be affected by the blurring effects. On the shape mask size keyframe window, we see that the mask gets progressively larger as the dog gets closer until I open it up completely at 90% on the timeline. To follow the dog, I use the X and Y position. I only need to turn on the keyframe for one of them and the other will automatically follow along. With the X position keyframe window open, I'll turn on the mask center and drag the mask around. Watch the graph. Since the playback is set at a particular time, moving the mask around moves both the X and Y positions together. See the spike in the graph? I'll open the Y keyframe window and we see that the keyframe has also moved a lot. I'll undo this. To place keyframes to follow the action, move the blue timeline indicator along the timeline from zero. Move the mask location at various points to follow the position of the target, in this case the dog. Either now or later, go back and adjust the mask size if necessary. You can add Bezier curves to smooth the movement and size changes. Now for the organic mask. I've already selected the fur on the dog's head as the color to be protected by the mask. Note that the mask color can be modified over time as the keyframe icon is present beside target. I've preset a range that will remain constant for this example, but the strength has a keyframe and I'll open the window. Strength is set at zero up until 70% and rises to 100 at 80% along the timeline. Note that I've turned on within the shape mask. This gives me the effect that I'm looking for. Blur the trail in the snow, exaggerate any snow on the dog, but preserve the dog's fur from blurring too much. Let's look at the mask at 70%. The screen is white. Watch as I move the cursor to 85%. We see the dog in the black and darker parts of the mask and some other areas show up as well. But the snow trail is white. I'll turn off the mask. Now watch as I turn off within shape mask. The snow trail comes back. Back on, snow trail gone, which is what I want. I'll accept the effect. On the timeline, I'll go to the point where I want the static image of the dog and export the image to a JPEG file. But first I have to turn off the effect because I want an original image of the dog. I can turn the effect off by just unchecking beside Smart Blur Pro. Once I've exported the image, I can turn the effect back on and import the image. Since I've already done it and applied the effects, I'll just drag it over and I'll place it right where I want to. I've also added in a title. The effect on the title was done with Pixelin Blur Bender Pro. Now you've seen how to do keyframing in Smart Blur Pro as well as selective blurring and combining shape and organic masks. Use your imagination and test out the effects on your own videos and images. I hope that this has helped you to understand how to use Smart Blur Pro. As a final note, Pixelin also has Smart Sharpen Pro and everything that you've learned here applies to that application as well. Take a look at the first tutorials if you did not fully understand some of the tools and parameters. Thank you for watching. Enjoy.